All right, let's jump right into week four. We got our best bet segment back, uh, one pick each in this spot because the, the board was not enticing to say the least. But what is enticing is the fact that we're nine and one on our best bet. So we got to keep up this torrid pace. Now I'm going to start with the FAU Owls, a team that really I think the public's forgotten about ever since Lane Kiffin left. And this play is predicated really as much on the Air Force pass defense being horrific as it is about FAU being able to take advantage of that. You know, Air Force only returned one starter. And when you look at returning production across college football, this is a boom year for it. You know, records across the board. Most teams are returning 70% of their overall production when you factor in the transfer portal. The service academies were not beneficiaries, obviously, of the transfer portal. And I think that's already been clear with the way that the Falcons are playing. In their last game against Utah State, I will add a Utah State team that was playing musical chairs at quarterback. They gave up 448 yards through the air, nine yards uh, per attempt and five touchdowns in that spot. So when I look at the FAULs, can they take advantage of that? Nikosi Perry ends up winning a quarterback battle in the fall. He's looked really strong. LeJonte Wester, a freshman wide receiver, has just been killing it the last two weeks, over 100 yards in each game, multiple touchdowns. I think this is an FAU team that probably should be favored in this game. They're catching five. I like them you know, with the points. I'm also probably going to play them on the money line. The Owls, for me, are a team that can go in and take advantage of a really porous Air Force secondary. So I'm going to go ahead and go against uh, an Air Force team that I think is statistically being buoyed a bit by the fact that they played Navy, which unfortunately, as a longtime Navy fan and, and what's, um, you know, they've been able to do in Annapolis, their offense is totally broken. They're firing coaches. They're making midseason moves. It's I won't even throw in a sinking ship analogy, but we all know what's going on with Navy. Air Force was able to take advantage of that, hold some of the three points. I think that puts a little lipstick on their statistical resume because really Air Force, I think, is in a world is in for a world of hurt in this game against the Owls. What's your best bet here to pair up in week four? Uh, for my best bet, like you said, I don't like the card this week. It was hard to find plays that really jumped out at me. So when in doubt, let's go with Old Faithful. I'm going back to my beloved Buffalo Bulls, minus 13 and a half at Old Dominion. I looked this up. I had to look it up three times. I don't. I still don't even know if it's correct. But the, the page I was looking at has Buffalo ranked first in the country in offensive success rate. So credit to the Bulls. That, that's kind of what they do. They're not explosive. They're not flashy. They're just efficient. They're 26th in the nation with rushing yards. They're expected to be very Kevin Marks heavy. But, you know, they, they rotate three backs now with McDuffie and Cook Jr. All of them are averaging over four yards per carry. They had a 61.7% success rate on rushing plays against Coastal Carolina, who is a much better defense than Old Dominion's. Kyle Van Trees <laughs> has been there for six years. He's the quintessential, like, efficient quarterback. He completed 60% of his passes, 7.3 yards per attempt in his career. And on the other side, Old Dominion, you know, I kind of hate this pick because I'm a Penn State guy, so I love Ricky Ronnie. I think he's going to be very good there. But that team is still young. They opted out, obviously, last year. Prior to that, they are one of the worst offenses in the country. And that kind of still seems like the case. You know, they flexed on Hampton a little bit in week two. So a lot, some of their numbers are a little exaggerated. But they had just 201 total yards of offense against Liberty last week. Their offensive line is horrible. They allowed two sacks and six tackles for loss per game this season. And Buffalo has a really good defensive front. You know, uh, Taylor Riggins is going to be able to get in that backfield. DJ Mack has kind of uh, won the starting quarterback job, and he has not looked good. He's completed just 50% of his passes, three touchdowns, three picks. I think Buffalo's defense is good enough to shut him down. You know, they they still have that kind of Lance Leipold attitude where they just want to run the ball, play defense, and, you know, efficient passing. And they're doing that. So I'll lay the 13 and a half with Buffalo over Old Dominion. I like that play a lot, to be honest. I do like the fact that it's Taylor Riggins. It reminds me of Tim Riggins and the actor Taylor Kitsch, I believe, played him on Friday Night Lights. So, you know, yep. what's not to love about clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose in that spot? Uh, Buffalo, just it, particularly if you can get it under the number, that key number of two touchdowns, I'm with you. I watched that the entire Coastal Carolina game. They were in it. There wasn't any smoke and mirrors. That Lance Leopold legacy if they win games, they've earned it. If they, if they lose them, you know, usually they're just outclassed in a talent perspective and old dominion doesn't have the horses in that spot. 